بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه جميعا وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to our next session on Kitab of Taj al-Arus al-Hawili Tahdeeb al-Nufus the book the crown of the bride containing that which disciplines the souls by Imam Ibn Abba Allah Sakandari we hope you're well it's an, uh, a blessing to be with you once again on this uh, session online. Um, last time we discussed repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the importance of that. And this is a theme that Imam Ibn Atta'illah talks about in the initial stage of this book. And we're going to be talking about the fruits of repentance and the, the growth through repentance, inshallah ta'ala. Um, but then he mentions, and today's topic is about following the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emulating him and following his sunnah and his example Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this is a very important topic and element of our lives because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sent down revelation Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala created us and placed us on this earth and sent down guidance for us revelation um, you know our beliefs what we're here for our purpose in life that wasn't without a, a means and the means for that was the messengers and prophets والسلام, and they were not merely messengers in the sense that they conveyed a message and that was the end of their role they were messengers because they have revelation which they conveyed to the creation but they also embodied and personified those teachings they were the prime examples and exemplars that we must now follow after them and of course in particular and for us today as Muslims the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala alihi wa um, and we have to obey his commands we have to follow his guidance you know uh, in the Islamic disciplines or Islamic law the Sunnah the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a core element of everything we do in life is one of the foundational source texts that our religion the religion of islam is based upon so this is a very very important topic however what one of the mistakes or the short-sightedness in this topic in this area is that most people think following the prophet is an outward action or an outward element of our lives and this is the first thing imam ibn al ta'ala addresses and he says emulation of his of the prophet is of two types the outer and the inner. Yes, we follow the Prophet Sallallahu in his actions. We pray like he prayed. We try to eat in the mannerisms he, he, he ate, alayhi salatu wasalam. We try and follow his example in conversation, in you know the demeanor he had in various circumstances, the sunnah, you know, the prophetic example in eating, in um, walking, in you know, um, treating, you know, interaction with others, in personal hygiene. And, you know, there's many areas we could talk about. But there's also another area which is the inner, which is the um, characteristics of the Prophet Sallallahu which is his, his, his gratitude, his humbleness, his patience, uh, his detachment from this world, his zuhud. You know, he did, wasn't a person who was attached to this world, alayhi salatu wasalam. And that's an example for us. That was not something that was his personal preference or something that he did as an individual. No, that was part of his mission to teach us uh, yes, we've been placed on this earth and we have, a, we have a, a life to live and we have enjoyment and we have attachments to this world in certain ways. But the goal is to detach and the goal is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The goal is the afterlife. Um, so yes, we do do the outward actions as Imam Ibn Tala says uh, and that is the sunnah. But the subtle is that you totally absorb yourself in beholding Allah alone in the prayer which is the maqam of ihsan. That we talked about before that you're in prayer and you realize Allah is there you're watching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you're being you know you're being observed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're reflecting and you're engaging in the prayer you have khushu' which is this this uh, this submission in the heart or this stillness and then you have khudu' which is another word it also means stillness of the heart or submission and submissiveness um, and you know we have this khashya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this awe and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is grandeur, not fear of being scared and worried, but fear of the, the, the magnanimity, the grandeur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we understand who we're standing before, and that puts in a state of awe and reverence. 
that is the inner sunnah to build that in our prayer to build that into our fasting when you go on hajj to not behold the kaaba alone outwardly but to realize that we are doing this as a submiss as an act of submission to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know we're going around a building or a piece of rock anti-clockwise why it's to submit our souls to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are wisdoms but the first and foremost element is this is the command of god and we follow the commands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we submit and this is the this is the greatest sunnah the sunnah outwardly is to do the tawaf in the prescribed method etc but also to engage the heart in tawaf to submit and surrender to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um so imam al-tala says our acts of worship are not complete until we find this sunnah until we find this level of submissiveness and this is he talks about this because this is uh, one of the core elements of the beginning of the journey to find humbleness to find reliance upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to turn back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he mentions an ayah of the Quran in this regard and he mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says I shall avert my signs I shall avert my signs from those who be, behave arrogantly on earth without a right it's a kabbaroon so this to have kibr to have this self pride this you know, arrogant self pride and, and uh, haughtiness and you think you're better than others and you're special because of your wealth or because of your strength or because of your intellect or because of your position and fame is not a good character trait you know we should humble ourselves in this world and we should realize that we are made of a drop of fluid we are made of the dust uh, we came from nothing to something and that's a gift from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should humble ourselves realizing who we are and that is a person that will then be given openings by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah will enable that person allah will give his signs allah will avert from his signs those who are arrogant but allah will turn towards those and open the way open the doors of wisdom and knowledge and understanding for those who humble themselves upon this earth and to others and to Allah almighty um so we should find this level of submissiveness in our acts of worship that's what is to be found first and foremost um and imam ibn al-tala gives a, a, an analogy or a parable he says um, in such a state of arrogance on this earth you are like a person with a fever who finds the taste of sugar to be bitter right so when you are shown the signs of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are averse to them you, you know you don't feel the the goodness of them and you don't feel the the mention of allah the, the dhikr of allah doesn't affect you and so forth because there's something wrong inside the heart so just like an ill person because of the illness the disease doesn't find uh, you know something sweet nice finds it to be bitter finds it to be difficult to palate Similarly those who have spiritual diseases find the dhikr of Allah the Quran Islamic discourse quite difficult to grasp and difficult to you know, it's not really going to affect their hearts so there's an inner disease that's actually the problem and these are the symptoms you know these symptoms are the lack of taste the lack of ability the lack of uh, being affected um so we need to look in, into our hearts what Imam Ibn Al-Tayla is saying <clears throat> may Allah be pleased with him <clears throat> and then he says that um <clears throat> this impoverishment this you know humbleness um is better than many great acts of worship that produce a, maybe a, a self or a level of self pride or self conceit or self righteousness right that and he says this is one of his actual pieces of wisdom we mentioned that imam al-ta'illah has uh, many wise sayings one of his wise sayings is um ma'siyatan awrath أورثت ذلا وافتقارا خير من طاعة أورثت عزا واستكبارا that an act of sin a معصية an act of disobedience that brings about ذلا وافتقارا um, neediness or, or humiliation and neediness and impoverishment to Allah realizing your weakness i.e. is better خير is better than an uh, act of obedience طاعة which brings about which produces عز uh, this 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 self respect this pride and and arrogance and you know something that's not good so it's not saying the good act is better than or is, is the bad act is better than the worst act no what it's saying is there's a danger in good acts in just acts alone in that if they're not producing the humbleness then that's actually a bad thing for you whereas bad acts disobedience or oh, oh not good or all the all really really you know something to be avoided but if there is a bad act that brings about this level of 
sort of guilt and submission and humiliation and sub, you know surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then that actually has a better outcome than the act of worship or obedience that was bringing about this arrogance and this haughtiness and therefore we need to look at the way we use our actions or the way we take the fruits and reap the fruits of our actions that it's not merely just I did this Alhamdulillah I'm special no I did this and it's a blessing from Allah thank Allah for the obedience thank Allah for the steadfastness thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what you have of goodness in your life and if there's a difficulty be patient with the difficulty you know we're going to learn about uh, shukr and sabr patient uh, thankfulness and and patience inshallah ta'ala and then Imam Ibn Atala mentioned an amazing concept, an amazing um, upshot of following the Prophet Sallallahu Why should we follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi What do we get out of it? Of course, success in this life and the next. But there's something amazing you get and that you can't achieve uh, sometimes through, you know, destiny. It's achieved through uh, your hard work, your acquisition of your good deeds. So of course there are people that are born into the family of the Prophet Sallallahu They're born into noble lineage or to noble righteous families and they attain a level of that. But what a, a true follower, a true member of the family of the Prophet Sallallahu a true um, participant in being a Muslim and being a follower and being a, a somebody who uh, represents the Prophet Sallallahu is someone who actually emulates him and follows him. And in this regard, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions two prophets, Ibrahim alayhi salam and Nuh alayhi salam, and how they talked about this very concept. Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Whoever follows me, whoever follows me, then he is, he's from me. <clears throat> and whoever doesn't, then he's a face to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as in the ayah of the Quran. So whoever follows Ibrahim alayhi salam, then he's from Ibrahim alayhi salam. You are from Al Khalil alayhi salam, the beloved, intimate friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did Nuh Islam say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, Verily, my son is from my family. Min ahli. He's from my family. You know, is he not going to be safe? So Nuh Islam's son didn't want to come into the ark. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised Nuh Islam his family would be saved. So he said, Is he not from my family? He's my son. You know, he's my blood son. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied, He is not from your family. Innahu amalun ghayru salih. He is not a good deed. He's not a pious action. He's not a a good person so him having disobedience to Allah and a lack of Iman and faith made him outside of the family of Nuh salam. the ones that followed Ibrahim salam, even without being from his lineage or from his offspring are from Ibrahim salam. so this shows us that following the prophets makes us from a noble status gives us that noble status and gives us that connection to the greatest of all of creation the prophets and this is the same regard as Imam Ibn Ta'ala here then mentions that the statement that is mentioned about Sayyidina Salman al Farisi that Salman is from us, the Ahl al Bayt. This is what was said by, reportedly by the Prophet, وسلم, but more soundly by Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib that Salman, Minna Ahl al Bayt. Salman al Farisi, he was a Persian, wasn't even from Arabia, came, struggled, long story he had. He came to Medina, he embraced Islam, and due to his piety, due to his struggle, due to his following the Prophet وسلم, and surrendering. And giving away everything of this life to just have that faith and to follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was given this honor, this rank, this status, this statement, this 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 testimony that Salman Minna Ahl al Bayt, that Sayyidina Salman is from the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, due to not his lineage, not his bloodline, but due to his act of worship, his sincerity, his in outer and inner following of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam and this shows us the bonds and the ties and the relationships following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the righteous can give us in our lives today um, and this is where we find all goodness Imam Nia Ta'ala then goes on to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the key to all goodness in following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam therefore by emulating him we will get the good from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will get our sustenance. We will get um, forgiveness. We will attain forgiveness through following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in our actions. And just to give you an example of the, the Sahaba following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa It's mentioned that during the uh, Treaty of Hudaybiyah, when the Muslims went to make Umrah, 
They went from Medina to Mecca to make Umrah, they went in Ihram. But they were prevented because there was hostilities with the Meccans, the Quraysh, and they were told to come back next year to perform their Umrah. And there was a treaty written of Hudaybiyah, certain conditions of a truce, the truce of Hudaybiyah. And the Muslims were distraught because they were not able to go and make pilgrimage, the Umrah, lesser pilgrimage. They were, they, this was something they were prevented from. And they had to return to Medina. Uh, you know, it was like a humiliation, it was like a loss that we came for this and we were denied this. And so the Prophet ﷺ told them, sacrifice your camels and shave your head and come out of Ihram and go back to Medina. We have, that's how you, you know, that we learned from this incident how to make up an Umrah, what to do if you're stuck and you can't do your Umrah. You perform your sacrifice, you, um, you perform a sacrifice, um, you shave your head and you come out of Ihram. And then later on you have to make up the Umrah. You have to do the Qadha or the makeup of the Umrah, which was done the next year by the Muslims. But at this command, the, the Sahaba didn't respond. So when they were given a verbal command, they were because they were distraught, they didn't respond to the command of the Prophet. ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ got really worried for them. He went to his wife in the tent, they, she was camped with them. Uh, in the tent of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he went to her and he said my, my people will be, they'll be destroyed because they're disobeying their Prophet so this is what we learned they will be destroyed because they're disobeying me you know they're not following my command if a Prophet commands them something commands them something disobedience to Prophets is what destroyed every single nation before them and my Ummah now they've disobeyed they're not acting upon what I'm saying they will be destroyed so look at the wisdom of Sayyidah Umm Salama the wife of Sayyidah Umm Salama Radiyatullah Anha the wisdom of ladies is sometimes, many a time, something that can help us. So she said to the Prophet wasallam, Go and sacrifice your camel and go and shave your head, O Messenger of Allah, and they will follow. Just do it rather than command it. So the Prophet went out and before everyone, he shaved his head, he sacrificed the camel and he shaved his, had his head shaved wasallam, and all of a sudden, all of the companions started to sacrifice the animals. And all of the companions, it says in the hadith, they, they were almost fighting each other to get this done. That there was such a like a chaos, if you like, or just a you know um, a reaction to this. That every single Sahabi, within a short period of time, had sacrificed his camel and shaved his head. You know, they shaved each other's heads and come out of ihram, and they had followed the command of the Prophet ﷺ. This is how they were so keen on following every single action of the Prophet ﷺ. How he led them by example. It also shows us the danger in that statement that if we don't follow the example of the Prophet ﷺ, how detrimental it is to us. Allah says in the Quran, as Imam Dhamir Atala quotes, In kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'uni yuhibbukum Allah, yaghfir lakum dhunubakum, wallahu ghafoorur raheem, if you love Allah, in brackets claim, in kuntum tuhibbuna, if you really love Allah, fattabi'uni, then follow me. So Prophet is commanded, qul, say, O oh, Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, to the people, if you all love to, if you all claim that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow me, follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah will love you. So following the, if we claim to love Allah, we've got to show our love to Allah. We've got to prove, we got to, what's the method of really being true lovers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What's the result? What's the upshot? The goodness. Allah will love you. It's a promise in the Quran. Allah tells the Prophet to tell us this sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's not hadith that the Prophet told us, even though that's a valid form of revelation. This is in the Quran, in Surah Ali Imran. Allah subhanahu wa tells us, commands the Prophet to tell us, He will love us subhanahu wa ta'ala if we follow His beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And He will forgive us our sins and have mercy upon us. Wallahu ghafoorur rahim subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so we should always make the dua, we should always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam outwardly and inward, inwardly. And we should be aware that this is something that will give us great rank and status Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, become beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is where we should find our pride and honor and respect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To Allah, lillahi wa rasulihi wa lil mu'minina, is, in a, in a, the izzah, honor and true um, status is with Allah, with His Messenger and with the believers for their iman, not for their worldly pursuits. For their sacrifices, for their struggles, the, the, the early Muslims is being referred to here, the people in Makkah and Medina. And we will be amongst them if we do the same acts as them, follow the same examples as them. We we'll become beloved to Allah, we we'll become beloved to His Messenger. We will be of people of honor and have true honor because this is where honor lies with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, honor does not lie with people. 
respect with people is a temporal thing. It will die out one day in the group, in the status you have amongst family or friends or your work colleagues. It will go one day and it will be nothing. It will be smoke and dust, nothing. But what is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the status and rank you achieved due to be your obedience, due to your sacrifices for this religion, for people, for serving others, for being good to your parents, there's a level of respect and honor that Allah gives. And that is with Allah. It's not a worldly thing you ask people to recognize. It's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that will last forever. That is everlasting glory, everlasting respect and honor. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us this. And this is the goal of this book to find that inner connection to Allah that we search for our honor and respect with him almighty and not with the creation to connect our hearts to him and realize he is the provider he is the sustainer he is the giver of all good and to achieve that through him through serving him through following his prophet وسلم, through repenting and turning to him and allowing us and, and repentance is a form of being beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gaining this rank and status with Allah and, and acceptance because ultimately we just want to be accepted as much as rank as we get or status we get, to be accepted by Allah is, is all success. And repentance is the key to that. And that's what we will go back to talking about next time, inshallah ta'ala. Repentance and how that brings all goodness and uh, makes you beloved to Allah and makes you somebody who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has ennobled. Uh, thank you very much for being a part of these sessions. Thank you to Imam Ghazali Institute and all the brothers and sisters working hard behind the scenes and doing the great work. Thank you all for tuning in. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.